addition of fruits and vegetables to a diet does not improve mm. markers of inflammation. We'll put that on or, screen. Yeah. Or antioxidant function. So um, there are a couple here. The first one is no effect of 600 grams fruit and vegetables per day on oxidative DNA damage and repair in healthy non-smokers. So where, James, is your benefit of fruits and vegetables? This is a 24-day um, a study in 43 subjects. One group had no fruits and vegetables. One group added a pound and a half of fruits and vegetables. And at the end of the study, our results show that after 24 days of complete depletion of fruits and vegetables or daily ingestion of 600 grams of fruits and vegetables, or the corresponding amount of vitamins and minerals, the level of oxidative DNA damage was mm -hmm. unchanged. unchanged. Right? This mm. suggests that the inherent antioxidant defense mechanisms are sufficient to protect circulating mononuclear blood cells from reactive oxygen species. I talk about this in my book, you guys. Live a radical life. You can do antioxidant defense with glutathione without fruits and vegetables, my friends. It's very clear. Especially if we live well and we're not eating dirty the rest of the time. If you read the study, there are multiple markers they looked at. They looked at the level of strand breaks, endonuclease 3 sites, form amino pyrimidine, pyrimidine sites, um, sensitivity to hydrogen peroxide, excretion of 8-hydroxy-2-deoxyguanosine, multiple things here to look at DNA damage, oxidative stress, no change. Furthermore, another study, effects of high consumption of vegetables on clinical, immunological, and antioxidant markers in subjects at risk of cardiovascular diseases. Look, the same thing. No significant changes were detected in clinical, immunological, or antioxidant markers in biological samples for the low vegetable consumption group. And they said there was an increase in white blood cell count for the low vegetable consumption group. Who knows if that's significant? The study provides additional evidence about the uncertainty of providing a clear evidence for fruit and vegetables in modulating markers of immune function and antioxidant status. Can you hear me smiling, you guys? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just, there's multiple studies. I'm not mm -hmm. even showing you guys all of them. The most interesting one, green tea extract only affects markers of oxidative status postprandially, lasting antioxidant effect of a flavonoid-free diet. They were looking at green tea extract, but what they ended up doing was removing all fluids with flavonoids, and they conclude at the end the overall effect of a 10-week, 10 weeks, mm. two and a half months, period, without dietary fruits and vegetables was a decrease in oxidative damage to DNA, blood proteins, plasma lipids, concomitantly with marked changes in antioxidant defense. So these three studies, and there are other ones here, fly in the face of the assertion that fruits and vegetables are beneficial, that their removal will be harmful for us, or as James is trying to claim at 147, that it was increased vegetables that had benefit. Joe is right here, in my opinion. It is the removal of junk food not the inclusion of extra plants that is the problem. This mm. is why vegan diets work, my friends. It is not the fruit and vegetables. It is the removal of junk food. And the problem with vegan diets is that they are not nutrient adequate enough and we will eventually become nutrient deficient mm -hmm. on them, right? But if we remove junk food, we will be way better off. This is what you said, Brian. Mm -hmm. The removal of oxidized oils, the removal of junk food, that's the first big step. It's what else you eat, not the meat. It's what else you get rid of. Yeah. And yeah, and yeah this, again, paradigm shifting. And it's hard to accept. I'm not a carnivore even. But, you know, I'm just saying it's so hard for people to understand that vegetables may not be these superhero things that we thought they were.